Hello, and welcome back to XR101. In this video, we're looking into the design of locomotion mechanics. The aim is that, by the end of this video, you'll come away with a better understanding of the various alternative approaches to moving the user around a virtual space, plus the pros and cons of each of these approaches. You should gain a better idea of the unique challenges that particularly head-mounted virtual reality brings to locomotion, along with a few, hopefully, helpful tips for overcoming some of these challenges. Locomotion is all about how the user moves around the virtual environment. Whilst understanding the concept is very straightforward, actually implementing it can be much less so. The main difficulty that appears in the majority of VR projects is that the virtual space is greater than the physical space within which the user can actually move. This is assuming your project is using hardware that supports six degrees of freedom tracking, without which the user cannot physically walk even one foot forward in the virtual world. The issue is in moving the virtual camera, which is attached to the avatar, a user's virtual representation in the VR environment. If the user cannot physically move the virtual camera into the desired position, then some form of virtualized movement is needed. Let's look first of all at direct travel. Direct travel is, for most people, probably the most familiar form of virtualized movement, as it's essentially the same locomotion system used in first-person computer games. Here, the avatar location can be moved along either two or three axes, depending on whether you want them to be able to levitate, by either button presses or value changes on an analog controller. Using direct travel, the user has a good degree of control over their virtual movement. If using the analog controller in particular, the user can stop and start their movement whenever they wish, and they have some degree of control over their velocity, depending on the sensitivity of the controller. Direct travel can be smooth, consistent, and can feel familiar to many users. This does unfortunately come at a bit of a cost. The biggest challenge with direct travel is motion sickness, caused by what's called vestibular mismatch. Vestibular mismatch is the sensation you get when the visual scene gives you a sense of movement that doesn't perceptually match your physical feeling of motion. This can happen both when the visual movement is greater than the physical movement, such as when you're traveling on a train and watching the world go by, or when the physical movement is greater than the visual, such as when you experience turbulence on an aeroplane. For direct travel in virtual reality, this means if the user moves their avatar virtually, there will be a greater visual sensation of movement than the physical sensation. But the most uncomfortable experience is actually when direct movement and physical movement counteract one another. Say, if you move your avatar forward whilst physically moving backwards, here you're pretty much guaranteeing someone is going to lose their lunch. Whilst any approach to direct travel can be uncomfortable for some users, there are a handful of pointers worth considering in order to make the experience as comfortable as possible. The first recommendation is to include some form of user customization. This could mean allowing them to map the movements to physical buttons or analog sticks of their choosing, but it could also mean allowing them to adjust the steady state pace of the movement as well as the acceleration and deceleration into and out of that pace. UX researchers found that many users who find direct travel uncomfortable do so because either the pace, the acceleration, or the deceleration of the movements is too fast. But if you make all the movements very slow, this will likely annoy other users. So customization is an effective workaround. Of course, you will almost certainly want to put some constraints on this customization, as snail crawl to light speed is probably too great a range. Two good reference points are the average human walking speed, which is around 1.4 meters per second, and the average human jogging speed, which is 3 meters per second. Another useful approach to direct travel is comfortable environment design. Comfortable environment design describes any way in which the designer has shaped the terrain, placed props in the scene, or controlled the nature of the action in a particular way that encourages smooth and sustained travel, and in a way that avoids constant jarring movement or directional change. What makes the environmental design comfortable can include a large number of factors, but for example, you might want to limit the amount of vertical noise in your terrain. Direct movement along the vertical plane is widely thought to be the most stomach-churning. 
So vertical noise, such as jagged, rocky terrain that bobs the avatar up and down, should be avoided. In a similar vein, it may be necessary to avoid using direct travel altogether if the action encourages the user to strafe left and right or make backwards steps. Direct travel in these directions is also well known to more aggressively induce vestibular mismatch. So if your experience has more in common with, say, everybody's gone to the rapture, which encourages slow, steady and consistent travel, then you have a suitable action type for direct travel as your approach to movement. If, however, you're interested in something more akin to, say, Doom VFR, which is built on fast-paced, reactive movements in all directions, the chances are a great number of users will struggle to comfortably use direct travel. The next locomotion technique that almost anyone who has used virtual reality before will be familiar with is teleportation. Teleportation is arguably the most commonly used locomotion method in virtual reality. As its name suggests, the method enables the user to reposition their avatar within the virtual space with immediate as opposed to transitional movement. Within this approach, there are, of course, quite a few options for variation. Teleportation target points can be fixed within the scene, limiting the number of places the user can teleport between. Alternatively, the target points can be more controlled by the user by way of gaze tracking. Gaze tracking approximates what the user is looking at by casting a virtual line forwards from the head-mounted display. This enables the user to select objects within a virtual scene using their own head movement. VR games built for mobile platforms, such as Land's End, don't typically support hand controllers, so use gaze tracking to allow a user to easily select teleportation points with their head movement. Virtual reality systems that do support tracked hand controllers often favour a kind of virtual casting line which extends out from the user's hand to identify a teleportation target point. This line will typically respond to the virtual terrain to create a visual feedback icon that instructs the player if they are able to teleport to that point. If so, they can depress or release a button to initiate travel. Some casting line teleporters simply determine the avatar's location, leaving the orientation unchanged, whilst other systems include a Your Rotator control that enables the user to not only specify the desired location, but also the direction they wish their avatar to be facing once the teleportation is complete. Your rotation can be disorientating for some users, but has the benefit of enabling more adept users to move around the virtual environment much more quickly. A significant benefit to action-orientated games such as Robo Recall. When it comes to teleportation design, there is also plenty of room for variation with regards to the transition stage of a teleporter. The transition from button press to repositioning of the avatar could be instantaneous. It could fade in and out of a black or white screen fill to partially smooth the transition or it could interpolate the avatar between the start and end locations without obscuring the image, giving the sensation of being flung from point A to point B. Or that same interpolation could be slow and smooth, which is usually the case in gaze-tracked teleportation. Teleportation can even be combined with other mechanics, such as the stamina system in Skyrim VR, which enables the first few teleports to be over relatively greater distances but this distance gets more restricted the more energy is drained from the player's stamina. Another good example is Doom VFR, which cleverly combines the teleportation system with its bespoke glory kill mechanic, in which the player's avatar can teleport into, and then explode out of, an enemy. Broadly speaking, teleportation enables full exploration of an expansive virtual space whilst minimizing the motion sickness problems that come with direct travel. Of course, they are not a flawless system, and many critics of teleportation point to a jarring loss of presence in the virtual environment, particularly in experiences that don't have a narrative justification for teleporting. You can see this when comparing different VR game genres, Science fiction and fantasy games such as Doom VFR, Robo Recall and Budget Cuts often favour teleportation as it can be narratively explained respectively as being either a future technology or good old magic. By comparison, games in the more realism-focused genres featuring historical or present-day settings often try to avoid teleportation in favour of other approaches 
as the inclusion of a teleporter simply doesn't make any narrative sense. The methods above represent the most common approaches to locomotion, and so we have explored them in a bit more detail. But it is also worth acknowledging a couple of lesser known approaches that can actually be extremely effective, particularly if used in certain settings or genres. These approaches are God Movement and Tank Mode. In a nutshell, God Movement enables the user via their hand controllers to reach out and grab the virtual landscape, then whilst still holding on, pull their hands towards their body, dragging the virtual world towards them. God Movement has the notable advantage of enabling the user to very precisely move around the virtual landscape in a way that minimises vestibular mismatch, as the user perceives the visual movement to be matching their hand and arm movements. Tank Mode operates on a similar principle to God Movement, in that it presents a means of moving through the world that doesn't evoke a sense of physically walking, and therefore reduces the risk of vestibular mismatch and motion sickness. The difference is in the approach. Tank Mode is akin to the control system for tank or recently mech type games, in which the movement is broadly similar to direct travel, with the user pressing buttons or moving the analog stick to move their avatar. The core movements are still forwards, backwards, side steps left and right for strafing, but Tank Mode typically also includes a yaw rotation control that emulates the swerving of a tank turret. But the key reason Tank Mode is different to direct travel is the visual frame of reference. In a good example of how VR research is definitely a good thing, studies found that if a VR user was encased in some kind of virtual shell within which they could look around independently, and if the controls moved the shell, not the user's avatar, then vestibular mismatch was greatly reduced. The same principle also works very well in VR space simulators, in which the shell is the cockpit of a spacecraft, or a driving game where the shell is a car interior. Provided the movement of the shell is kept independent of the movement of the avatar, the effect works really well. It is also worth mentioning that there are some very interesting experimental approaches to VR locomotion currently being tinkered with. Whilst the finer points of these approaches are out of the scope of this video, they're certainly worth looking up, particularly if you find yourself interested in developing your own bespoke locomotion systems in future projects. These include redirected walking, which uses a range of visual manipulation techniques to create the illusion for users that they are physically walking around a much larger space than they actually are. Then there's orientation freezing, in which the user intentionally freezes the rotation of the avatar for a brief moment so that they can physically reposition themselves without the avatar moving, effectively enabling them to physically walk a short distance back and forth whilst their avatar moves continuously forward. One last recommendation for further reading is the Omnidirectional Treadmill, a hardware peripheral that enables the user to move the avatar by physically moving their legs and feet whilst the overall body position remains fixed, usually in a harness. Like VR design in general, which locomotion system you use and the finer points of its design cannot be decided using a generic process. The VR experiences that utilise locomotion most effectively do so by considering the available options in context, again looking at the problem they're trying to solve or the task they're trying to complete, the stakeholders who are invested in their project and the pros and cons of the available alternatives are all considered. Through this process, they give their project the best chance of delivering an ideal fit-for-purpose locomotion mechanic. Thanks for watching.